In nuclear physics, there's a very important process paralleling kundalini awakening called nuclear fission, in which the nucleus of an atom splits into subatomic parts, oscillating at higher frequencies and releasing the inherent energy stored in the original atom. The fission process produces free neutrons and photons in the form of gamma rays experienced as heat, thus releasing a very large amount of energy as the original particle is liberated to a subatomic form. This division of the atom creates an exothermic reaction in which the stored energy inherent in the system is released into its surroundings. An exothermic reaction is a chemical reaction which releases more heat than it takes to create the reaction. An example of this is thermite, which is a pyrotechnic combustion powder made from iron oxide. Thermite undergoes an exothermic reaction in which sparks of molten iron spit out in every direction, burning as hot as 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt any kind of metal. The equation E equals mc squared proposes the mass to energy relationship, which is a fundamental principle of general relativity. This equation reveals that the more mass an object has, the more energy is stored within it. In the study of atomic physics, the objects which these scientists are concerned with weighing are primordial elements, which are residues non-native to Earth, originating from the Big Bang and from the particles of ancient supernova explosions, which occurred long before the formation of our solar system. These extremely high energy cosmic reactions in space created elements non-obtainable on this planet otherwise. For instance, there is no amount of heat or pressure naturally occurring on planet Earth capable of creating plutonium, which is the heaviest primordial element currently known to exist. In order for fission to produce energy, the total binding energy of the resulting elements must become greater than that of the starting element, meaning the sum energy of the parts must become greater than the energy at the nucleus which initiated their magnetic field. The resulting detonation from the binding energy at the nucleus splits the atomic structure of the particle and releases the potential energy stored within. Fission is considered a form of nuclear transmutation because the resulting fragments are not the same element as the original atom, but now exist as subatomic particles with lighter individual nuclei moving at incredibly faster speeds. Beyond the extremely dense elements such as plutonium and uranium, contemporary scientists have begun identifying dark matter and the living colloidal field of zero-point energy, which is a source of unimaginable power and energy, comparable to a billion times a billion tons of plutonium per one cubic centimeter of space. This living field connects and sustains all life and the expansion of the entire universe. As Albert Einstein once said, the field is the only reality, implying that we are all a part of a larger zero-point energy, which is the source of all manifestations emanating from the eternally evolving consciousness, the Brahman of Vedanta and Sri Tripura Sundari of Tantra. In fact, long before Western science developed unified field theory, Tantra has advocated the existence of an intense field of energy flowing from one object to another at various frequencies and vibrations, with each individual being intricately connected to the rest of creation in an intimate web of life. Now scientists are busy exploring ways in which the source of energy is stored in matter, 
by smashing high energy subatomic particles into protons. Similarly, Hatha yogis increase and direct their vital energy of prana shakti to repeatedly smash against the nucleus of the nadi system, sashumna. Sashumna nadi is the central pathway which the awakened prana ascends through. Sashumna is blocked until balance between the negative lunar tamasic energies and the positive solar rajasic energies is developed, so that the third sattvic energy of fire or transformation begins to take over and flow. Sashumna is the spiritual energy which then blossoms and overrides the previous dualistic conditions of the mind and body. The ancient text on Hatha Yoga, Goraksha Samhita, describes this process very clearly. The serpent power, forming a coil above the kunda, remains there while covering with its mouth the opening of the door to the Absolute. Through that door, the Absolute can be reached. Covering that door with her mouth, the great goddess is asleep. Just as one may forcibly open a door with a key, so the yogin should break open the door to liberation by means of Sri Kundalini. Hatha Yoga leans heavily on willpower and self-exertion. However, other traditions might find it disrespectful to speak of the divine Shakti in this manner and would disagree with the idea that one can strong-arm the goddess and obtain her liberating grace by such impersonal and mechanical means. Such tantric traditions often lean heavily on devotion and utilize such means as mantra, ritual, diksha, and shaktipat to transfer a high voltage of prana from guru to disciple. In many cases, the kundalini shakti is awakened immediately at the time of transfer. The nucleus of the initiate's being is given such a powerful surge of prana that the atom of duality is split and the causal vital power is released from within, rejuvenating and revitalizing the entire being. Unlike Reiki or other such methods, kundalini awakening is not an attunement or an alignment, but a powerful activation of pranic energy from the very nucleus of your being, allowing the meditator to experience the eternal intrinsic qualities of satyam, truth, shivam, effulgence, and sundaram, beauty. Although the means may be different, the primary aim of hatha yoga, as well as tantric sadhana, is to awaken the dormant causal power of Kundalini Shakti. Kundalini Shakti is the potential energy latent in all matter, which creates, sustains, and reabsorbs the life force of each living system. The latent energy of Kundalini exists not only in the human form, but within the nucleus of every atom of the universe. Recent quantum physicists have revealed that within the nucleus of an atom is a sound wave. Thousands of years ago, the ancient rishis described the underlying energy of Kundalini Shakti as being formed by light and sound. They told us that the entire universe is created by a tremoring vibration or spondon within the nucleus of the bindu and emanates into existence as sound. From the sound of nada arises the current of prana, or life force, which emanates all life and all living systems. The sound of the cosmic vibration is om, which is called chit shakti, the power of consciousness, and is at the primal root of each and everything manifesting in nature.
Both modern science and the ancient seers agree. Everything that comes into being is the result of sound waves, which transform into particles and the basic molecular building blocks of which all matter is composed. It is for this very reason that our latent causal power of Kundalini Shakti is most easily awakened through mantra. Only the divine sounds of mantra resonate at high enough frequencies to penetrate the very nucleus of our being. The awakening of this extremely high voltage of energy and the subsequent ascent to Sahasrar through the Sashumna Nadi is the experience of total liberation from the confining gravity of matter into a dimension that transcends time, space, and form. When the ascent of Sri Kundalini Shakti reaches Sahasrar, Shiva and Shakti unite into each other, becoming a unified field of the highest potential. Although many traditions only speak of the ascent of Kundalini, it is through the descent of Shiva and Shakti as one unified field of consciousness that the total regeneration and complete healing of the entire molecular structure takes place. As a result of the nuclear fission of Kundalini awakening, the body is supercharged with the nectar of unquenchable Amrit. The orbit of the molecules within all the cells of the body actually speed up, and with all the dormant regions now fully illuminated, the brain begins to function at the subatomic quantum dimension of Vijnana, the highest intuitive wisdom beyond the construct of the individual mind, senses, and intellect. <laughs>